Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 12.11, Modeling with Differentiation. 12.11 represents Chapter 12, Section 11 of the Pearson A-Level Maths, Pure Maths Year 1 textbook. Let's have a look at exam style question 1. Figure 4 shows a solid brick in the shape of a cuboid measuring 2x cm by x cm by y cm. The total surface area of the brick is 600cm squared. Part A show that the volume v cm cubed of the brick is given by v equal 200x minus 4x cubed over 3. Let's have a look at the solution to part A. Firstly, we are told that the total surface area of the brick is 600 centimetres squared. So we can write down A equals 600 centimetres squared. Now I'm going to work out the surface area A. Let's start with this face over here. So the area of this face is 2x times x, which is 2x squared. But we have two lots of this. We've got the right hand side and the left hand side. So two lots of 2x squared plus. Let's work out the area of this face over here. So it will be y multiplied by 2x. So that will be 2xy. But we have two lots of this face. We've got the front and we've got the back. So two lots of 2xy plus. Let's work out the area of this face over here. So that would be x multiplied by y. So xy but we have two lots of this face, we've got the top and we've got the bottom, so two lots of x, y. This here is a surface area A, it has to equal 600. Okay, now I'm going to simplify this. So the first term becomes 4x squared, plus second term becomes 4xy, plus third term becomes 2xy, equal 600. We can collect the like terms, so we have 4x squared plus 6xy is equal 600. Right, so in the final answer for the volume, there is no y involved. So what I want to do over here is make y the subject. So I've got 6xy is equal 600 minus 4x squared. Then I can divide both sides by 6x, so I've got y equals 600 divided by 6x minus 4x squared divided by 6x. I can now simplify this. So I've got y equal 600 divided by 6 is 100. And 6 divided by 6 is just 1. So we have 100 over 1x, which is just 100 over x. And then minus... 4 divided by 6, this is simplified as 2 over 3. And then powers we can subtract, so 2 take away 1 is just 1. So it's 2 over 3, x. We can call this equation 1. Right, now I'm going to derive a formula for the volume of this cuboid. So the volume is given by length multiplied by width multiplied by height. So what we have over here is y times x times 2x so that would give me 2x squared y equation 2 now i don't want the volume in terms of x and y i only want it in terms of x so now i need to eliminate the y i can substitute equation 1 into equation 2 so substitute 1 into 2 so the volume is going to equal 2x squared multiplied by the y, which is 100 over x minus 2 over 3x. So if I expand and simplify this, I therefore get the result 200x minus 4x cubed over 3 as required. So that there completes part A of the question. Let's move on to part B. Given that x can vary, that means that x can change. Use calculus, or calculus is integration or differentiation, to find the maximum value of v, giving your answer to the nearest centimetre cubed. So this is an optimization problem. We are trying to work out a maximum value, so we have to use differentiation here. So what we want to do is maximise v. This implies that we need to solve dv over dx 
equal zero. Okay, so we've got the volume equation we have to differentiate with respect to x. So dv of a dx is equal, if I differentiate 200x, I just get 200. Take away, differentiate this term over here, you get minus 4x squared. Okay, so now what we need to do is solve the dv of a dx, which is 200 minus 4x squared equal to zero. So I've got minus 4x squared equal minus 200, hence x squared is equal 50. Okay, so I've got x equal plus or minus 5 square root 2. If you simplify square root 50, you get 5 square root 2. But we know that x represents a length. So since x is more than 0 because it's a length, we must have that x has to equal 5 square root 2. Okay, now to maximize v, we have to substitute x equal 5 square root 2 into the volume equation. So v maximum will equal 200 multiplied by 5 square root 2, take away 4 multiplied by 5 square root 2, cubed all over 3. Okay, so now we can put this into our calculator. So the V maximum will equal 942.809 dot dot dot. So V maximum will equal 943 centimeter cubed to the nearest centimeter cubed. So that there, ladies and gents, completes part B of the question. Let's move on to part C of the question. Justify that the value of V you have found is a maximum. So in part C, what we have to do is use a second derivative test. We have to work out the second derivative. So we are after d2V over dx squared. We've got dV over dx, which is 200 minus 4x squared. So if I differentiate that there, it will give me minus 8x. So that there is my second derivative. Now what we want to do is we want to substitute x equal 5 square root 2 into the second derivative. So we have that d2v of a dx squared is evaluated at x equal 5 square root 2. So that would be minus 8 multiplied by 5 square root 2. And this would be minus 40 square root 2, which is less than 0. That's important. Now since the second derivative is less than 0, we then conclude that v is maximized for x equal 5 square root 2. Okay, So we have proven the case that v is indeed a maximum for x equal 5 square root 2. This completes exam style question 1. Moving on to exam style question 2. Figure 3 shows a flower bed. Its shape is a quarter of a circle of radius x meter with two equal rectangles attached to it along its radii. Each rectangle has length equal to x meter and width equal to y meter. Given that the area of the flower bed is 4 meter squared, part A show that y is equal 16 minus pi x squared over 8x. Let's have a look at the solution to part A. Firstly, we are told that the area of the flower bed is 4 meter squared. So the area A is equal 4 meters squared. Now the flower bed is a compound shape. It is um, made up of two rectangles and a quarter circle joined together. Let's work out the area A. So the area of this rectangle over here is xy. Since this rectangle is identical to this rectangle, the area of this rectangle is also xy. So two lots of xy is just 2xy plus the area of this quarter circle. Now the area of a full circle is pi r squared. The area of a full circle with radius x would therefore be a equal pi x squared. But we want a quarter of this circle, which is this part over here. So it would be pi x squared divided by 4. That area a is equal to 4. Now we need to make y the subject. So I'm going to rearrange and use some algebra. 2xy is equal 4 minus pi x squared over 4. We need to combine these two terms, 
So the 4 you can rewrite it as 4 over 1. We want a common denominator of 4, so we can multiply top and bottom of this fraction by 4. So if I do this, I get 2xy is equal 16 minus pi x squared all over 4. To make y the subject, I can simply divide both sides of the equation by 2x. So I've got y equals 16 minus pi x squared all over 8x as required. Let's move on to part b of the question. It says hence, so we have to refer back to our answer in part a. Show that the perimeter p meters of the flower bed is given by the equation p equal 8 over x plus 2x. So the perimeter p is the distance around the outside of this flower bed. So we have x plus x, which is 2x, plus y plus y plus y plus y. So that will be plus 4y plus this part over here, that curved part there. Now the circumference of a full circle is c equal 2 pi r. The circumference of a full circle with radius x will therefore be c equal 2 pi x. But what we have over here is a quarter circle with radius x. So that part there it will be a quarter of 2 pi x. So we have to take 2 pi x and we divide it by 4. So I'm going to simplify the perimeter. So the perimeter is equal 2x plus 4y plus pi x over 2. Now I'm going to call y equals 16 minus pi x squared over 8x, equation 1, and p equal 2x plus 4y plus pi x over 2, equation 2. Let's start comparing the perimeter formulas. As you can see over here, there is no y involved, so we need to eliminate the y. To eliminate the y, we have to substitute equation 1 into equation 2. So sub 1 into 2. That's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so I've got p equal 2x plus 4 lots of the y, which is 16 minus pi x squared all over 8x plus pi x over 2. Now, 4 divided by 4 is just 1. 8x divided by 4 is 2x. So we have p equal 2x plus 16 minus pi x squared all over 2x plus pi x over 2. Ladies and gents, we can split this fraction into two pots. So p is equal 2x plus 16 over 2x minus pi x squared over 2x plus pi x over 2. Let's simplify this. So the first term is just 2x plus 2 divided by 2 is just 1. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So that term simplifies to 8 over x. Now over here, if we simplify that, we get minus pi x over 2. And then we've got plus pi x over 2. These two cancel out. Therefore, you've got the perimeter equal 2x plus 8 over x as required. This completes part B of the exam style question. Let's move on to part C. So in part C, it says use calculus. So integration, differentiation is calculus. To find the minimum value of p, because this is an optimization problem, we're trying to minimize here, we're going to be using the technique of differentiation. So what we want to do here is minimize p. This implies that we're going to solve dp over dx equal 0. Right, now let's look at the p equation, the perimeter, the first term, we keep it as it is. Before we differentiate the second term, we have to rewrite it using laws of indices. So 8 over x is the same as 8x to the power minus 1. So now I can work out dp over dx. The first term differentiates to 2. For the second term, we bring down the power, so minus 1 multiplied by 8, which is minus 8x, to the power minus 1 minus 1, which is minus 2. So now we can solve this one over here, which is 2 
minus 8x to the power minus 2 equals 0. So we have minus 8x to the power minus 2 equal minus 2. Hence we have x to the power minus 2 is equal to a quarter. Now if I remove the negative and I put down x squared, this will reciprocate the fraction. So x squared will have to equal 4. Okay, so if I solve for x, I know that I get plus or minus 2. But ladies and gents, if you go back over here, x is a length. So we have that x is more than 0. Hence, we have to take x equal 2 as the solution. Now, to minimize the perimeter, we have to substitute x equal 2 into the perimeter formula. So p minimum is calculated by substituting x equal 2 into the perimeter formula. So what we have over here is 2 lots of 2 plus 8 lots of 2 to the power minus 1. So p minimum is going to equal 8 meter. So that there, ladies and gents, completes part C of the exam style question. Let's have a look at part D. Find the width of each rectangle when the perimeter is a minimum. Give your answer to the nearest centimeter. Okay. Now the perimeter is a minimum when x is equal to 2. So to work out the width, which is y, we have to substitute x equal 2 into the y formula. So we have y equal 16 minus pi multiplied by 2 squared all over 8 multiplied by 2. Okay, so this answer will be in meter. So I'm going to write the unit meter. I want to convert it into centimeter, so I need to multiply by 100. So the y is going to equal... If I take this, multiply by 100, put it into my calculator, I get y equal to 21.460 dot 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 centimetre. Now what we want to do is give the answer to the nearest centimetre. So the y, the width of each of the rectangle, when p is a minimum, to the nearest centimetre is going to be 21 centimetre. Okay, nearest centimetre. And that there, ladies and gents, completes part D of exam style question 2 and this teaching video, 12.11 modelling with differentiation. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.